Hello and welcome to this video. I'm gonna give you some background information of how my recording studio is set up. In my studio, where I'm mostly doing music production and speech recordings, I'm combining analog output gear with digital hard and software. This approach is called hybrid. One very special feature of my studio is its digital audio network called Dante which interconnects all the analog devices, the digital mixing console and my computers, allowing arbitrary routing of audio channels between any source and destination in my studio with only one single mouse click. Dante Audio over IP networking is extremely flexible and overcomes the point-to-point -point routing limitations of traditional connection formats like USB, Firewire, Thunderbolt, MADI, and ADAT by converting audio into IP data packets, just like those data packets that travel across the Internet. As all devices are already interconnected to form an impressive audio network, it's simple to extend networking functionality to MIDI messages also. Among other benefits, this allows me to remote control my analog SSL summing engine by automated MIDI faders in the DAW as well as to sync the transports of all the computers that are connected to the network. MIDI networking allows me to route MIDI data generated by my USB keyboard not only to the computer it is directly connected to, but also to any other computer or MIDI device. While the audio network is managed by a free app called Dante Controller, provided by Australian company Ordinate, which is the inventor of Dante, the MIDI network is managed by a free app called Copperland. Let's have a look at how simple a Dante Audio network is set up and managed. Main A to D converter in my studio is the Ferrofish A32 Dante. This device offers 32 analog inputs and outputs. Looking at its rear face, we can see that it also provides 32 ADAT in and outs as well as 64 MADI in and outs, both optical and coaxial. What makes this unit very special is its Dante in and out ports on the far left. Dante enabled audio devices dispose of at least one RJ45 connector on their back. Some of them, like this one, may dispose of an additional secondary port for easy redundancy. Depending on the nature of the device, the in and out channel count that is provided by this connector can vary between two and a massive 256 audio channels. The A32 Dante offers 64 Dante in outs. I've signed all its 32 analog and the 32 ADAT inputs to the 64 Dante outputs to make all these signals available in the door. Besides bridging all of my analog output gear to the Dante network, the A32 Dante also bridges the 8 ins and outs of an RME babyface, as well as the two stereo returns coming from two Lexicon PCM90 effect engines via two of its ADAT ports. Let's observe the auto discovery process taking place when the device is powered on. I'm launching Dante Controller, which allows to manage the entire Dante audio network. It can be used to conveniently route channels between Dante devices, to display background information about the status of the network and also to solve network-related issues. For now, the only Dante device present on the network is the Yamaha AIC128D Dante PCIe Accelerator card. As the name suggests, this card offers 128 inputs and outputs to my door via Dante. Note that the card has been automatically elected Clockmaster by the Dante system itself. I'm now powering on the A32 Dante. The device is operational in just a few seconds. It is configured to automatically make itself the master clock of the entire network for the time it is powered on. It has now been recognized by Dante Controller and all its network routing subscriptions from the last session have been restored. The upper section of Dante Controller shows Dante Audio Transmitters, while the left column shows Dante Audio Receivers. 
Routing channels is as easy as a mouse click into the grid to establish a subscription between two devices. Let's power up the Yamaha DM1000 mixing console, which is equipped with two 16-channel Dante I.O. cards. This mixer is not used to record or mix down, but rather as a digital signal monitoring hub, thus only very few cables are connected. As soon as you want to connect more than two Dante devices, you need a network switch. I'm using two manageable Cisco SG2008 gigabit switches. Note that my internet router is also connected to one of these switches, thus Dante audio traffic and internet traffic are sharing the same network. To ensure proper operation without glitches, even while watching full HD YouTube videos, the switches have been configured to always prioritize Dante audio traffic. By adding virtually any number of switches and Dante devices, it is possible to create very large audio networks. All Dante devices will auto-discover one another and arbitrary routing between them becomes immediately possible. Keep in mind that a single inexpensive CAT6 network cable can carry more than 500 uncompressed audio channels per direction simultaneously. Since many years we are used to connecting computers to other computers for data networking purposes. By installing Ordinate's Dante Virtual Sound Card Driver, which turns your computer's NIC port into a 64x64 audio interface, you are now able to network computers to exchange multi-channel audio in the same way. In the lower right corner of the screen, we see the remote desktop of my laptop on which Dante Virtual Sound Card is installed. I've set the driver to ASIO mode and to a channel count of 32 in-outs. As soon as I click the Start button of Dante Virtual Sound Card, the new inputs and outputs become visible and also routable in Dante Controller. Likewise, when Dante Virtual Sound Card is stopped, the laptop is immediately removed from the network, but all subscriptions will be restored next time I start it again. We are now looking at the laptop screen, where I'll be launching Dante Virtual Sound Card to quickly walk through its features. On a Windows computer, you may choose it to operate in WTM or SEO mode. You can then determine the number of inputs and outputs that will be available to transmit audio over your LAN interface. Up to 64 ins and outs are possible. You can choose a Dante latency and also a dedicated SEO latency corresponding to the processing power of your computer to avoid audio glitches. Note that all latencies add up to a cumulated latency for this computer. Using the Dante Virtual Sound Card driver, this latency is considerably higher than that of a dedicated Dante hardware device or the Dante PCIe accelerator card. Compared to a minimal accumulated latency of around 5 to 10 milliseconds with Dante Virtual Sound Card, those hardware devices can achieve very low latencies of under 1 millisecond. In spite of its higher latency, Dante Virtual Sound Card still is a stunning application and can be extremely useful. Once Dante Virtual Sound Card, or DVS in short, has been started, I can launch my DAW to configure DVS as the DAW's audio device. I'm opening the Program Preferences and go into the Audio Device menu. ACO is selected as the audio system and DVS as the ACO device. As we previously set the DVS driver to provide 32 ins and outs, we are now able to select a desired range from these inputs and outputs. Back on the main computer's desktop, we will now have a look at how automation of the SSL Sigma summing engine is set up. I've launched the app IPMIDI, which came with the Sigma. IPMIDI provides up to 20 virtual MIDI ports on the computer and enables the user to send MIDI to other devices or computers via the network. There are several apps that can provide MIDI over Ethernet on a Windows computer, like the commercial app IPMIDI, 
or the free apps RTP MIDI and Copperlan. The most powerful and flexible among them being Copperlan, because it can aggregate virtually any other MIDI device on the computer and create very complex routings. We are now looking at the MIDI devices set up for Reaper. To make use of Copperlan aggregating all MIDI devices, I have to make sure to have them all disabled in Reaper, else Copperlan has no access to them. The only exception is IP MIDI, as it's the only app that is recognized by the SSL Sigma summing engine. So I have all IP MIDI ports enabled in Reaper. IP MIDI ports show up in the list as Ethernet MIDI, while Copperland ports are labeled V MIDI. Configuring Copperland is fairly straightforward. You will be presented a contraption representing each hardware and software MIDI device that is installed on your system as well as those of other computers that are also running Copperland. In the Connect tab, you can easily establish virtual cable connections between any of these devices. You can choose to make connections on a regular MIDI bus basis or even on an individual MIDI channel basis. Copperland makes my USB keyboard available on all computers that are also running Copperland, allowing me to play virtual instruments that are installed on any of these computers. I can also easily route existing MIDI tracks to another computer to use its VST instruments during mixdown.